It's 6 a.m. and you're watching Fox 31's Good Day Colorado. In this time of colds and flu, it's so important to disinfect. I know you're big on oh, disinfecting. Oh, I'm the, yeah, big germaphobe, yep. Well, how to keep your home and office as germ-free as possible so you can stay healthy. Those tips uh, coming up next. Uh, well, with this being a cold and flu season, you know, a lot of people are going to work sick mostly because they have to. But do you know how dirty your workplace is? Well, Dr. Bob Arnott joins us live now from New York with uh, a look at what he found. And this is pretty scary. I've got to say, doctor, that I'm a bit of a germaphobe. I really, I'm very careful to not touch my eyes or my nose. So far, I've, I've missed out on the flu this season, so I hope I'm doing all right. You are. You got to watch out for this. You know, the interesting thing, Peggy, is this. So most of us know, look, you cough, you sneeze, someone touches you with their hands, you could get the flu. What they don't realize is that when this epidemic exploded on the international scene in Mexico City, they found in the rooms of patients who had the flu and died of it, that the flu virus, the H1N1, was still on bed rails and gowns two days later. Ugh. And the key thing is, this H1N1 virus now can last 22 hours on a hard surface. So we did some testing at some stations. Look at the bad news first. Another station, I don't want to embarrass them. <laughs> they had 1,760,000 colonies on a keyboard. Now, here's oh. what you had. You had 50 colonies in your restroom. You had 10 at the anchor desk, which is probably the one place I'd want to avoid there, or uh, at least keep my hands to doctor, myself. Doctor, that's where I sit, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Otherwise, you did pretty well. And the nice thing is that when you disinfected with Spectrosan, uh, there was nothing there afterwards. Now, one of the key things, Peggy, in terms of disinfection is, look, at there's there are lots of great household products we've seen around for years, and they work. I mean, they, they disinfect the countertops and the keyboards and whatnot. But when you have high-touch surfaces, surfaces that you touch again and again and again, like a keyboard in a newsstand, where a hundred people might use that. They cough, they sneeze, you go, you touch it, your hand goes to your eye or your nose, you may have the flu. So okay. in terms of disinfection, let me just read what a lot of the labels are. Danger, warning, corrosive, seek medical advice. This Spectrosan 24 is a new biotech molecule. I carry it around with me myself in the third world because what it does is it kills the virus uh, in one minute and it has what we call residual power, which means that for 24 hours afterwards, it's still protecting that environment. The other stuff, uh, some of it, poison. This stuff's safe enough. You oh, can wow. actually spray it in your mouth. Okay. You can watch me make sure I'm okay, but yeah. uh, chances are you're going to survive in there. Actually looking at it as a mouthwash. So It's good to know it's not too toxic, but doctor, so if you had to kind of list like the top three things that people should really be concerned about picking something up from, is it the phone, the keyboard, and what else? Like what would you say people should be extra cautious about? So it depends on your environment. So in the kitchen, it would be when you take your handbag and you put it down on the countertop, that will have bacteria from every place you've been, including maybe a bathroom floor where you've left it. In the office, probably number one is going to be the telephone in a newsroom. Number two is going to be a keyboard like this. In a doctor's office, kids' toys. Kids basically explore oh. their environment with their mouths, so they're putting that virus pretty much every place. But the key thing is to be aware that hard surfaces are a vector for the flu, something that most people are unaware of. Sure. And do you think, too, because we're actually hearing some reports now that perhaps this was not as prevalent as most people expected, H1N1. We're not seeing the massive waves of, of people who are really coming down with this like we sort of anticipated. Being a doctor, are you hearing about these huge waves or is it sort of a lot of hype and it didn't really materialize? What's interesting, I was up at Dartmouth College yesterday and UVM the day before, two colleges out here, they were seeing patients every five minutes. What's happened is that this, these state labs are so overwhelmed with testing that we're not testing and getting the numbers out publicly. But if you look at colleges, masses of them, and we're worried, Peggy, that as the Christmas season comes, up you have lots of people in airports and going home that we could see another spike in the epidemic the good news is a lot of these cases have been mild the bad news is the very severe cases are in younger people who have very active immune systems mm -hmm. this college i was at yesterday just lost a 25 year old graduate student who died from h1n1 okay. so it does happen and you want to be really careful you can take the antivirals early very very important if you're sick but also protect the hard surfaces around you. Yeah, no, good advice there. So don't ease off the gas pedal yet in terms of looking out for that flu virus. <laughs> Dr. Bob Arnott, great to see you this morning. Thanks for the update. I'm, you, I'm sort of grossed out about my keyboard now, but I guess it's better to uh, have the knowledge than not. All right. Disinfect uh, it. <laughs> we will, we will. Thanks, doctor.